some point earlier this year, I realized I was becoming way too dependent on the weather. If the conditions were bright and sunny, you bet I was trying to get out there and shoot in that great light. If it was gray and dull, you bet I was back home working on something else. I was becoming way too reliant on shooting when the light was good, because when the light is good, you just follow the light. It sort of guides you when you're out shooting. But when it's bad, it's really easy to get frustrated and call it a day early. You know, it's not a good habit to have as a photographer in my opinion, and I feel like I was sort of falling into that mindset a bit of only wanting to shoot when the light was good. My friend Reggie recommended me to get this book, The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin. It's been making the rounds on the internet quite a bit recently, I've noticed, but it's a great book for anyone who considers themselves a creative person or wants to tap into that creative side of themselves. I'm mentioning it in this video because there's a chapter in here where Rubin talks about breaking the sameness. Breaking free from those times where you feel like you've hit a wall in your work where it feels like it's not taking you anywhere new. When we're in that state, we want to approach our work with excitement, right? We want to engage with it as if we're engaging with it for the first time. This chapter is in the context of a recording studio for musicians, but he goes on to talk about creating exercises for yourself, creating different experiments that have no expectations. For example, he talks about changing the environment a lot, having the lights off while they perform, a recording in the morning instead of late at night, changing the stakes of a recording session as if it's the last time they're ever going to perform a song. The actual exercises themselves are not that important. Their purpose is to create different perspectives or conditions for the artist and see where that takes them with their work, hopefully creating some kind of structure that goes beyond their regular methods. And so when I read this chapter, I felt like this was something I actually do in my own photography. Whenever I get in a bit of a rut, I always try to switch it up, try something new or something I haven't done in a long while. I find when I change things in my process, it always sparks a little bit of new excitement for me. But recently, I do feel like I've been getting a bit in a habit of you know only wanting to shoot when the conditions are right for me when it's when the light is good but that's not the reality of street photography so much of street photography is the unpredictability of it you literally have no idea what to expect once you hit the streets with your camera i think that's what makes this genre so fun in my opinion so if something isn't going your way, if the photo you envisioned isn't happening the way you want, or if there's no light out like today, you gotta learn to work with it. So the conditions, as you can see, are not ideal. It's raining and there's no light. Two conditions I find myself avoiding a lot recently. I wonder why. But you know what they say, when the light gives you lemons, make a YouTube video. Yeah, I don't think anyone says that. It's during moments like these, when the conditions aren't in your favor, that you need to learn to improvise, to experiment. So I'm going to play around with a technique I haven't used in a long time, and that's intentional motion blur. Two years ago, I actually did a whole video on the topic of motion blur, but since then, I've really only used it sparingly in my work. Mostly because it's a very situational technique. Not every moment calls for motion blur, so actually setting out and having it as an intended style in all of my photographs, it's a bit of a challenge in itself, but I think you're gonna see this technique shine in this kind of light, or I guess lack of light.
order to control my exposure and compensate for the increased light that I'll be getting from lowering my shutter speed, I'm using an ND filter. This is a three-stop ND filter from the brand Earth, who are also today's sponsor. Earth is a great source for high quality photography products such as these filters. I have a magnetic version that I use on my video camera, which makes it really easy for me to go back and forth with it on and off my lens. They also make lens adapters for pretty much every lens and camera body combination you can think of. I recently featured their Leica M to Fujifilm X adapter in one of my last videos. And they also make camera carry products such as bags and camera straps that are all made from recycled materials. Today, I'm using their black mantle camera strap made from recycled leather. One of the really cool things about Earth is that with every product you purchase from their website, they plant five trees to help with deforestation all around the world. If you're thinking of picking up anything from their store, you can use the code FISAL and that'll get you 10% off your purchase. Thanks to Earth for sponsoring today's video. So this is a three stop ND filter. So that means it's gonna lower my exposure by three stops. That's gonna really help compensate for the increased amount of light that I'm gonna get by lowering my shutter speed. I have my shutter speed set to half a second and my aperture all the way to F16. I'm just gonna keep my ISO set to auto and let that do its own thing. Definitely take some time to play around with your shutter speed and get it to the right speed. I like to have just my moving subjects with the motion blur effect, not the rest of my environment. So I need to make sure my shutter speed is set so I can comfortably hold my camera without shaking it and causing the rest of the image to be blurry. That's going to take some trial and error. So definitely give yourself some time to warm up. Right now I feel a bit like I'm forcing this motion blur look to images that aren't really calling for it. Like I don't feel like the motion effect is really helping these images at all. I kind of had a feeling that this was going to eventually happen, but it's part of the challenge. Like anything that's new or different, you're going to probably get a lot of shots that don't really work. But that's okay, that's why we've set no expectations. It's the whole point of this exercise. Just have fun with it see where it takes you. What's cool about motion blur is that there are some techniques within the technique. One way to go about it is standing as still as possible and letting subjects move by you. And then there's the tracking technique where you can move your camera with the subject and that creates this motion effect of the environment around the subject. And lastly, you can make completely stationary scenes have motion just through your own camera movement.
Now later in the week there ended up being another pretty grey day. I didn't have any intentions of shooting with motion blur but it came to my mind to use it here when photographing the pigeons over at the Boston Common. I probably wouldn't have experimented with motion blur here had I not just played with the technique earlier in the week. So it's pretty cool to see how you know creating that exercise for myself actually led to some practical use of the technique I was experimenting with. I hope this video shows that there's always possibility for something creative to happen. And maybe this is more of a reminder to myself that I don't need to be so dependent on certain conditions for me to find the motivation to shoot. That with whatever situation I'm handed with, be it a bright sunny day or pouring rain, photography is always going to be a possibility. And it's actually during times like this, when the conditions aren't that good, that I'm no longer in my comfort zone. And that's a good thing, because now it's an opportunity to grow.